Hello, and welcome to SoberCast, where we provide AA speaker meetings and workshops in podcast format. We're an ad-free podcast, and if you enjoy listening, please help us be self-supporting by visiting SoberCast.com, look for the donate link, and drop a dollar or two into our virtual basket. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Have a great day. I have a watch. I don't know where we can start the bid at. Uh, oh, yeah. You know what? I, I, I have no idea what's going on. And uh, uh, Sean asked me, uh, Hey, will you, you blah, blah, blah. Sure, yeah, a month ago. And, uh, you know, and, and, uh, then he called me 46 times because you're going to have to understand that I am the most irresponsible person on a 12 step program. I'm the worst. <laughs> God knew exactly what he was doing when he made me an actor. Because if they want me, they'll send a car. Uh, <laughs> So help me God, my wife and I showed up at the Sheridan. I had about 12 friends, they showed up at the Sheridan. Danny, where are you speaking? At the Sheridan. Yeah, you can see it from the, from the Hollywood freeway. Thank God they didn't go to Motel 6 across the street. Uh, you know, there's always a... You know, I got loaded, that's all. You know, I got loaded and I got loaded. And I had a tough time identifying. You'd have to understand. I, I wasn't uh I wasn't like your basically all American kid, you know, and uh, uh <laughs> I uh I didn't like anybody over five foot eight and uh <laughs> and my neighborhood was predominantly Hispanic, you know, so that was it, you know, and uh uh so growing up, like I, you know, I didn't get along with too many people. You know, I had a, I had a bunch of a, a bunch of friends around me that felt the exact same way, and so we were all short. And uh, <laughs> and uh, if if we couldn't find anybody to like fight, we just fight like one starts, we just started fighting. It was, you know, it was, it was, uh, just, just the way we grew up, you know, and uh, I had an uncle who was uh, my mentor, my uncle Gilbert, and uh, he was a, a dope fiend, you know, I mean, when he was 14 years old, I think I was about eight, and uh, my grandmother said, you know, go out there with Gilbert, look at him, he's out there with his friends, and they're reading the Bible. And, uh, and my grandmother had uh, had a Bible that they used to sell. It was sixteen ninety five, but you did easy payments over a period of twelve years, <laughs> <laughs> and you ended up paying about three thousand dollars for that thing. Nobody ever figured it out, you know. But the, but it was beautiful. It was a big red Bible, and it had gold leaf, gold trim, and the wood beautiful. And as I walked up to my uncle's little gathering there was my uncle there was uh jimmy jimenez who's, who's dead and and uh and uh, uh bobby who's also dead and and uh, and, uh, and my uncle and i walked up and all i heard was <laughs> <laughs> and they had the book open and then i heard somebody sure messed him up and uh, I went, I stood there, and, and Gilbert said, get out of here. And I said, uh, Grandma wants me to play with you. <laughs> and they had the page open to what they had. Whoa, he was, and, uh, and all I heard, I heard this. I, one of them said, let's get him loaded. <laughs> And at the age of eight, uh, my uncle handed me this cigarette, but 
there's no way I was going to put that thing. You're going to have to understand, this was, you know, this was in the early 50s. And they didn't have those kind of papers that, <laughs> that you did like that, you know. If this was like corn paper. It, That you know, yeah. <laughs> some of you remember. You know, uh, <laughs> old dopeies, all the old dopeies. Yeah, I remember that. You know, yeah. <laughs> and so they had this nasty-looking brown, ugly, and I couldn't, I couldn't. So they got a bag and they put it over my head. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so. I either got, I either was going to get loaded or, or suffocate, one of the two. <laughs> and and uh, I was about eight. For the next three years, I was about 12, 12, 13, uh, yeah, 12. I smoked weed. I boy, did we smoke a lot of weed. I mean, we smoked so much weed that I was loaded when I wasn't smoking weed. I don't know, if, you know, I hear you, I hear ha, ha, just like, Whoa. and, uh, and it was amazing how you don't feel, you, you were just a drug addict. It's that simple. It's not, I, I feel like my uncle must <coughs> coughed on me or something. And it was all over because I can remember stealing weed because at the time people used to bring like a like a like a pound of marijuana. A pound was about thirty five dollars in. It's like, and and, they, and everybody would start rolling. You know, everybody would start rolling at the age of nine. I'm I'm rolling, and I got whoa, I got whoa, I got whoa, I got. It's automatic. Nobody said steal something. <laughs> it's like just whoa, okay, whoa. <laughs> and out of a half a pound, there's four of us, and there's like twelve joints. <laughs> and you know, it's like you know, God. It's like all I do is steal weed from my my uncle. Steal weed from my uncle, and you immediately learn that smart mouth. Drug at because I'm nine and I'm rolling and somebody would immediately say, "Wow, hey, check him. Where do you learn how to roll weed? Your mother showed me." You know what I mean? <laughs> it's, um, you know, because automatic. It's like you know, keep people off you. I don't care how old I am. I'm rolling weed. And I'm stealing something too. And then, uh, and then, it's amazing. But but my whole neighborhood got loaded on weed. It was like a fun neighborhood. You know what I mean? It was like people were giggling and laughing and eating potato chips and and, uh, and, and cereal without milk was okay. Hey, let's go. Have hey. no milk, okay? Let's go. And uh, uh, and then at about the age of twelve, uh, about twelve, twelve, or twelve and a half, it's like our whole neighborhood is like changed overnight. I mean, overnight. It's like it went from Happy Valley to, you know, like it just took a crash. And nobody showed up at the front door anymore. It's like they all just oh, popped up in the backyard, you know. And, <laughs> and people started talking like, <laughs> and, and, you know, and before, like, somebody would come to the front door, Loaded on, hey, where are you guys? And all of a sudden, it's like all these little, wow, it's like, it was like a, like a spy movie or something, you know what I mean? And my uncle, my uncle Gilbert became like really popular. It's like everybody, would they give this guy presents and it wasn't even his birthday? We had, we had three lawnmowers. <laughs> And no lawn, our, our lawn dirt, lawn dirt, we had lawn mold. We had sets of tires in our garage, with sets of tires, I mean just sets of tires. We had tools, like all kinds of, and radios, it was a, whoa, 
I had two bikes. I never had a bike. I had like two bikes. And, uh, and, and everybody looked sick. <laughs> it's amazing. And, and my uncle, Gilbert, he wheezed it. My, my grandfather, my grandfather was, was like a, a tyrant. And, and, and to this day, sometimes I can think of it, I still get scared. You know what I mean? This man could like, there'd be a big fight in our living room and, and his bedroom door would just like crack. <laughs> and, and this man was like, he was like, there used to be like a coscoron is what they call, uh, but when you're bad and, and, and it's like these mm, knuckles and, and my grandfather actually had an arm that extended like 10 feet. And, then, ah! and he could literally, literally almost knock you out. You know? and, uh, and, and he would be screaming at us. And I wanted so bad to be like my Uncle Gilbert. Because this man, my grandfather, terror in my, in my heart. And, and I would be like standing in front of him and he'd be carron charros and, and I'd be like, I would literally, you know, gonna, gonna pee my pants. And, and I'm there and I'm like, I just, and Gilbert. years old, I'm actually praying, dear Heavenly Father, make me like my Uncle Gilbert. Please. Because I can't stand this. This hurts my stomach. This hurts my heart. This hurts every part of my body. And look at how totally cool and unafraid my uncle is. <laughs> My grandfather would get so pissed at Gilbert, he would like split. And I would like, because I, I mean, you have to understand, I'm fighting fainting. Do you understand? I'm trying not to faint. And I'm sitting there looking at him, and finally I'd go, Gil, and he'd go, ah. <laughs> and listen to him. I mean that. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, listen. Because <laughs> he's right. Oh, we are listening. Oh, I want to be like that. And uh, one day, my uncle got up, got, got, got busted, got busted. Now, you have to understand, I didn't, know, I didn't know what a dealer's habit was. But he got busted, and he was gone three days. Now, when he came out, he didn't look cool at all. You know, he looked like a rah And this is a guy that was always kind of like hair comb, right? Style slacks, always had them, them, them tailored shirts, you know, because he had big wings. It was like, just automatic tailored shirts, you know. And so, and it just, just always looked cool. And uh, he didn't. <laughs> he'd, been, he'd been sleeping in his clothes for like three days. And you know how we get when, when we're sick, and he'd been sick. And he came in, and I seen this mania. I seen a person I didn't even know. And I killed him, blow, ran past me, ran into my grandfather's room. From there, ran out, ran into the bathroom. What is going on? I opened that bathroom door, and uh, I opened that bathroom door, and uh, I seen this guy that didn't look like the guy I knew. And he was like this. And he screamed, get out of here, Danny boy. They used to call me Danny boy. You know, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and I said, no, I already locked the door. I'd, I'd lock the door. I'm inside now. I said, give me some. <laughs> I did not know what he had or what he was doing, but I wanted some. Whatever, I didn't care. You know. <laughs> and, uh, and he said, uh, no, I can't get out of here. Give me some Rotel. <laughs> and um, and he says, "Here, hold this." And, and, and he had 
but I'm holding, I'm holding this. Oh, now I'm a, I'm a kid at 12. You don't want to tell me I'm going to get a shot because you won't find me. <laughs> I'm not one of those kids. I'm not afraid. No, nah, I wouldn't take a shot for nothing. Polio day, I wouldn't be there. You know what I'm <laughs> so, but for some reason, at this time, he looked, something was going on. And he like, I'm holding this thing. And he like had, he went into my grandfather's room and he got, my grandfather's diabetic. So he had that little glass, syringe, that glass one. And you see everything in that. And I'm watching it. And I see that pow. And then I watch, whoo. I see, this is God's honest truth. I seen total and complete hipness, complete and total unafraid go from his toes. I, it was amazing. This guy went from this to ah, you want a fix? Ah. <laughs> oh, Jesus, that's it. I found it. And I hate to say this because I know a lot, a lot of heavy dope fiends, you know, and and because yeah, I, I detox a bunch of people, I work in detox. And I, you know, how much did you use your fix? Everybody's like, oh, oh, half a spoon. Damn. How much? The old times, oh, half a cap. Like, Damn. My uncle beat his cotton, beat a cotton, and shot me and OD'd me. Next thing, I I woke up soaking wet out in the yard. <laughs> But if I could remember, if I could remember what my entire body was saying was, boogeyman all gone. <laughs> and you know, that's how I hung out with my uncle. And me and my uncle used to, every, uh, like, like every week we'd go down to East Los Angeles and, uh, and we'd go see this guy Chewy. And we and, and 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 we pick up we pick up like three quarters and and bring them back and cut them all up, and we go you always go you, it's the best I go by seven thirty in the morning you know seven thirty during that traffic code go go early you know, and uh, it's amazing I can remember our car never had brakes, and you never you always cared going, but but once you got loaded you ah, it didn't matter <laughs> ah, brakes are cool you know, and uh, and so. So we'd pick up these three quarters and we'd cut them up and, 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 and do our thing for the week. And then uh, this one day, this one morning, we got there and we knew something was wrong because like, like Chewy lived with his grandmother, his mother, his wife, the kids, everybody. So it was a big apartment in Temple. And uh, they had like three apartments all together. And, 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 uh, and they were all out on the porch. Everybody was out on the porch. In, in, in pajamas and curlers and crying and screaming and, and we walked up and to his wife was named Salita and we said uh, Salita what's wrong and, and, uh, and, and she was <laughs> he's got that shit that's, that's all shit <laughs> and Gilbert said wait 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 and, 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 he, and, he, and we walked into the bedroom and and, uh, and, and Gilbert said you Chewy I said Chewy now, now, you have to understand, Chewy was about 108 pounds. He had tattoos on him that weighed more than he did. <laughs> and and then he, he always wore like, like 36 boxer shorts. I never seen, that's all he ever wore, boxer shorts. I never seen him boxer And uh, he'd have been a perfect, the perfect poster for Just Say No. You know what I mean? <laughs> just, uh, 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 now that I think of it, then I thought he was pretty cool. You know what I mean? Uh, but... But we walked into his room and Gilbert's going, Chewy. I said, Chewy. And all we heard this, Bethel. Because that's Gilbert, you know, Bethel. And, 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 uh, and Gilbert says, Yeah. Said, Are they gone? <laughs> I'm thinking he meant his family. You know? And Leto and, and, and says, Yeah. And, and my, my uncle went to the closet and opened the closet. And Chewy's in the closet. With a machete. <laughs> and 
And he said, what is wrong with you? And he said, I've been doing that shit. Shit. <laughs> I just kept doing shit. And then he, 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 had this, he had this rock. I swear to God, it's about this big. It was huge. And it was in this plastic kind of paper. And, 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 and I got it. And, and I thought, damn. Typical dope fiend, see? I'm trying to save this guy here, you know what I mean? And I, I put this thing in my pocket, and we're talking, and, 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 and we ended up fixing it, and, and then, and then uh, uh, you know, his, his, his mom and grandma always would, like, make us a little breakfast, and then we'd throw it up and, 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 uh, <laughs> and go home, you know what I mean? <laughs> and so when Gilbert starts to cut up his stuff, he started, it's amazing, because he started cutting it up right here on Vineland, and Sherman Way, he had an apartment there, and he's cutting up, cutting up, and and I just said, oh, "Hey Gilbert, what is this shit?" <laughs> and he said, "Watch well, coke." And I says, uh, "How do you use it?" <laughs> and he said, "Oh, you fix it." So I said, "About how much?" And Gilbert said, bought that much? <laughs> I, I put about that much into a spoon. <laughs> Next thing I know, in my boxer shorts. <laughs> I'm, I'm running screaming down Sherman Way to please call the police on me. Because <laughs> my heart burst and I'm going to die. <laughs> and Gilbert's running behind me saying, how much did you use? He wants to get some shit. <laughs> had a run. That was a terrible run. I, I wake up some nights still remembering that thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> and now, God, nowadays it's amazing. You see people coming into Cocaine's Anonymous and, and, and they say they got crack out there now. <laughs> Please don't let me go back out there. <laughs> man. God, man. <laughs> and you know what? I've been stumbling around this program for a long time. I mean, it's like, you know what? Like, the, like I got, I, all of a sudden I got clean. I mean, the first time I walked into a meeting was in 1959. That was before cocaine was anonymous was even thought of. And then it was funny because people talk about slip. I had a little slip, <laughs> and then, and, but I made it back. I made it back for the Monday meeting. You know, what I mean? <laughs> yeah. it's wild. I had a little slip in 1959. I got out 62. <laughs> had another little slip 62. I got out 65. <laughs> had another little slip 65. I got out the end of 69. I don't never want to have another slip. <laughs> because they tell us, if you leave this program, some of you, I'm going to tell you something right now. It's unbelievable. But in 1959, a guy whispered the curse to me. He said, Danny, if you leave this program, you will die, go insane, or go to jail. Now that's the curse. You all just heard it. So now you're screwed. <laughs> you should have did what I should have did. When that guy whispered that curse, I should have went, ah, I can't hear you. I didn't do it. I heard it and so did you. Now let me tell you what I just did. You, you, please, dear Heavenly Father, don't let this happen. But if somebody goes out, you know the only guy you're going to remember <laughs> 
only guy I remember. They said, Danny, if you leave, you will die going to San Diego. Let me tell you something. Four months later, four months later, the cop pow, kicked in my front door. No, wait, that's a lie. The cop pow, kicked in my mom's front door. <laughs> shotgun. You'll move and will blow your brains out. And the thought, the thought is hitting me. Die. Go insane. Go to jail. And if the thought is hitting me, <laughs> if I move, I'm not going to make it to jail. <laughs> That's all I knew, is if I move, I ain't making it to jail. And I ended up with some bad beefs. Man. I ended up with some bad beefs that I didn't even remember. Cops told me, put on those clothes. Because I'm going to try to put on, put on those clothes. And at the time, this is 1959. And uh, I'm wearing, I was wearing some, some khaki pants with a little tiny cuff down at the bottom. And starched. And they're covered in blood. They're soaked in blood. I don't know if any of you ever, ever experienced starch and blood. But, but it like cakes really awful. And, and so I got this, my pants are like just caked in this, this, this almost like glue. And, and I had a yellow Sir Guy shirt on. I don't know if you remember that. It was Sir Guy. It was a shirt. It was a yellow and white shirt with a yellow and white vest. And, and they're like just, just the whole side is just like, like if somebody fell on me and hit right here. And, and, uh, and he said, no, put those on. And you know what? I was praying to God, please, dear Heavenly Father, let this be my blood. <laughs> Please let me be cut, stabbed, shot, something. But don't and you know I wasn't even hurt. I put, I put. And they told me to put these shoes on, and I knew I was in trouble because these shoes were caked in blood and hair. And uh, and uh, and I caught two mayhems out of that, out of that, uh, out of that. And uh, and so anyway, die, go insane, go to jail. And the amazing thing is that I don't remember. So understand, that's the amazing thing. And I could say maybe it wasn't me if it wasn't for all that hair on my shoe. See? And it was like, die, go insane, go to jail. That curse followed me everywhere I went. Die, go insane, or go to jail. Die, go insane, or go to jail. That's what will happen if you leave this program. And to further prove that, in the 35 years that I have been clean and sober, I have never, nobody, thank you. <laughs> nobody that has ever left this program has ever called me and said, hey Dan, that's me. No, you know what? I, yeah, no, no, I left. Yeah, yeah, no. I'm just, I just can't tell you what, I'm having a great time. <laughs> hey, no, 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 no. I know you, hey, my wife loves me. I just bought all my kids presents for, yeah. Hey, they think their dad is, yeah, I'm coaching Little League. No, 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 I'm, I'm you know, I'm the bomb, Holmes. Life is beautiful. God bless you. Okay, thank you. God bless you. Nobody. 35 years! Nobody's ever called. Let me just, the kind of calls I get from people that leave this. Okay, either I'll get like a spouse, the wife or the husband will call me. I've had men call me going, <laughs> she, she loaded it, she took our everything. Oh, I'm, we're dead, the whole family. I, I don't know. I, that's the husband. The wife, same thing. Yeah, he, yeah, he wrecked the car. I don't know. And then I like, I, the cause I love is home. <laughs> Dumb in jail. <laughs> die, go insane, go to jail. I didn't die, go insane, go to jail. No, 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 you know what, no. You know what? And I just, I, and I, 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 I immediately, I immediately ask people. See, because I watch people work perfect programs every time they come back. <laughs> And I immediately jack them up and say, hey, dummy, come here. What step were you working just before you left? Because I want to know. Nobody. 35 years. 
Nobody has ever said, Danny, I was really into step three. I was getting ready for step four, Holmes. I was ready, man. I walked outside and God struck me loaded. Nobody's ever said that. <laughs> People always say, eh, yeah, I wasn't really into the steps. So I make a mental note. Well, just stay in the steps. I don't care how good you work them. I don't care if you get an A and F. Don't matter. Just try them. Does, doesn't matter. I watch. I watch people write inventories like somebody's going to grade it. I've never understood that. And, and so then I see someone else. Come here. What meetings were you going to just before you left? Because I want to know. See? Because, and I'm uh, like, wait, it's funny that first part when someone says, I got away from the steps, I just make a mental note. Don't get away from the steps. Just try to work them, whatever. See? Because if anybody ever says, well, I, you know, I was really working step three, I really, I've crossed that one out then. Screw it, I ain't working that one. <laughs> Shit. I'll go one, two, four, one, two, four, one, two, four, one, two, four from now on. <laughs> no one's ever said it. See? I asked them about meetings. Did you go, what, what meetings were you going to? I love it when they say, ah, oh, Dan, the, the meetings just got too social. <laughs> you got to remember, before you got here, you were in a damn closet by yourself. <laughs> you idiot. I always get a pen. I go, okay, here, wait, hold on. I got two meetings for you. Here, one's in Folsom, one's in, in San Quentin. Very unsocial meetings. You'll love them. <laughs> See, I go to social meetings. I do. I go to meetings where people are making noise. I get scared when meetings are, am I in the right place? <laughs> Quiet. Everybody. <laughs> Man, my, my, uh, thank God. You know what? I had to tell you something. Thank God my wife's here. I'm telling you that much right now because I can't sit still. I had ADD and, and hyperconda. I had all that crap before they even named it. <laughs> I was just a bad kid. And it's like she was down there. Shh, be quiet. Be quiet. Shut up. Shut up. Honest to God, I wanted so bad to just like run around to where that auctioneer couldn't see me and yell, Bellum! <laughs> Her! <laughs> Her! Because <laughs> I just. You got, huh? Come on, man! When I couldn't find dope, I sniffed glue! <laughs> <laughs> And when I couldn't find dope, I box. Answer the phone. You know, so it's like you got to understand. There isn't anybody in this room that is too tightly wrapped. And yet, some of us like we're like acting like like we're playing with a full deck. It's amazing. We couldn't make a full deck if we used everybody's cards in this place. <laughs> We'd end up with a lot of three of diamonds, a bunch of like jacks, <laughs> and a bunch of those jokers that don't count. <laughs> but yet some of us got a great front. I, you know what, look at, I, I gotta tell you something. I, I got here, and by the grace of God, do you understand? By the straight out grace of God, and it was amazing. My grandmother always used to say, Tienes el diablo. You know, I got the devil. You, you got the devil. You got the devil. All of you, Tienes el diablo. And that was, and pretty soon, my, my whole family started saying, Tienes el diablo. You know, I got the devil. <laughs> 
amazing. I got to a Cocaine's Anonymous meeting, and I heard somebody say, well, where was I? I, was, I, I? I forget. I think I was down, like, not down South Central, but somebody said, G-O-D, God, get out, devil. And when he said, whoa, <laughs> hey, do you know my grandmother? I said, whoa. He said, whoa, that's it. That was it. All my life, that's all I had to say was God. That's it. See, because I was full of that devil. <laughs> full of all that. And it was like amazing. It's like this thing, this program. It's like, you know, don't tell them. Don't tell me this program ain't God inspired. Those people, those people that, that started. And it's amazing. You guys, the Cocaine's Anonymous, like really beautiful. Narcotics Anonymous, well, really, we stole that from AA. And now we don't want to cop to it. Like, like we did it all. Like, no, 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 no. I, I think we, didn't we think of that? <laughs> I've been around long enough. Do you understand? I've been around for a while, man. I remember when Cocaine's Anonymous started. And it was like, oh, I got to tell you something. I didn't have, 1985, I spoke at a Cocaine's Anonymous meeting. I walked in and everybody there looked like somebody I'd robbed. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta tell you, the funniest thing in the world. It was like, you gotta remember, I think Cocaine's Anonymous started in 1984. So in 85, we still just had like the therapist and the, and the psychiatrist and the, the business people. You know those, ah. Uh, I might need rehab. <laughs> we did not have what is in Cocaine's Anonymous. <laughs> Them crack smoke rock and shot a case hard. <laughs> we did not have those people that took all their worldly possessions straight to the hood and <laughs> just give me what you got. <laughs> Let me know when I burn out. It's amazing. You see? I love being clean. You understand? My whole life is centered around being clean. I'm, I'm really sorry. I take a lot of pictures. People always go, can we take a picture? Yeah. I, if I offend anybody, please understand. Man, I am so worried about your anonymity. That's a damn lie. <laughs> I got to tell you something. If you're worried about your anonymity, don't come around me. <laughs> and, 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 and I say that in good faith. See, because I'm the guy you do not want to invite to your work if you're going to go. <laughs> I am a representative of this program. You understand? I will scream this program. You understand? I love Cocaine Development. Fuck you. Shit. Are you crazy? When you were tweaking in your damn closet, you weren't worried about your anonymity. <laughs> when I was on the front page of the LA Times in 1965, handcuffed, I sh wasn't worried about my anonymity. <laughs> oh, yeah, I gotta tell you something. On, on movie sets, people hate me. <laughs> when they come out of the closet, when they come out of the bathroom, the Oh, I see. Hey, hey, did you just do some coke? Whoa, you got all right. Hey, no, 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 I love follow. No, did you? Fuck them. They can't beat me up. I don't give a shit. Don't do it if you're worried about it. I wasn't worried about it. I, I, I did it. Went to prison for it numerous times. Did it in prison. It's amazing. 
I used to be in prison. They had gun towers. They had barbed wire. They had guards. They had M16s. <laughs> I love being clean, do you understand? And I am absolutely not worried about my importance. My wife says something so beautiful. My wife, she's Debbie. She's in real estate, so. Stand up, Deb. Hey, Debbie, stand up. That's right. Oh, shit. Did I score? God's been very, very good to me. <laughs> and uh, you know what? It's like this thing, man, this thing of being clean. Being, uh, seven years ago, eight years ago, my wife, I think she, she was watching me do my taxes. And... and and I made quite a bit of money in this acting thing. And I got into acting, but I sat quiet because of a guy from Cocaine's Anonymous. I, I spoke at a CA meeting in 1985. And, and I told him, like, I wanted so bad in this CA meeting. I, it's like, it was at, at Cedar Sinai Hospital. And it was 1985. There's about 80 people in this place. And they all, they just looked like, Shut up! Give me! I wanted so bad to just to just pull a shot, a drop. Of, get out! Shut your mouth! Give me all that damn gold! <laughs> just rob them all, and then I wouldn't have kept it. I would have put it all outside. Yeah, just keep it all. <laughs> they all look so nice, and and, and I, I I I I spoke, and then I got ready to leave, and this kid came up to me and said. I really identified with you, Danny. <laughs> this kid was like out of Brentwood. <laughs> he couldn't have been from a neighborhood near my neighborhood. You know what I'm this kid didn't have a tattoo or a feather on him. You know what I mean? And uh, he definitely couldn't have been of any in any jail that I was ever in, or we'd have changed his name. <laughs> so, uh, Something exotic, you know. Something exotic. <laughs> and I gave him my number. That's all I've been taught to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My phone number. Okay, call me. About a hundred days later, and I remember because he told me he had eight days clean. And he was telling me he hit the bottom. I mean, and we're in this CA. So I really hit the bottom, Danny. And I see one of them Rolex, the imperial, one of the good ones. <laughs> the one that moves like this. Not, not the one that goes like, you know. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, my mind is telling me, yeah, I'm going to get this little bastard outside. I'm going to show him the bottom. Gonna, Give me that watch. <laughs> now you're on the bottom. <laughs> and I, I gave him my phone number. And just left. I didn't hear from him. A hundred days later. Exactly. A hundred, 108 days, I remember. Because I got a phone call at 11 o'clock at night. And, and this is what it was. And this is the way God sets things up. 17 years I've been clean. 17 years I've been clean and sober. I've been out of the joint. 16 years. I've been a drug counselor. And, and, and I'm making about, yeah, no, $300, $400 a week. I don't even know. Before taxes. And, and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and all of a sudden, I answer my phone. And I hear this. <laughs> And, and I was living alone at the time, so I, I automatically said, uh, do you want me to get naked? <laughs> no, no, I didn't, I didn't know what kind of call. I, I didn't know what kind of call it was. And he says, I have, a, I have a hundred, I have a hundred, I have a hundred and eight days cleaning. My dad got me back in the, let me back in the house. And I got a card and everything's go, going good. I, I think I'm going to use, he says he thinks he's going to use that's like, that's like a message from God. Because most of the calls I get are like, oh. <laughs> I got a load here. <laughs> and I'm not a good person to call if you get loaded. Don't call me drunk at quarter to two because you can't find a ride home.
because I will get the address of that bar and go down and beat your ass. <laughs> I don't, Shut up. Don't be calling me, fool. And don't call me tweaking at three in the morning from your closet because I will, I will. Get, shh. <laughs> quiet because I went by your house and they really are out there old. I saw them they're behind that car and then I'll call you back in about 20 minutes and I'll do that all night I told this kid, well, come on over, man. Just hand hang on. He goes, I can't. I'm, wor I'm, wor I'm, wor I'm working, Dad. Dad. And I said, well, what do you want to do? And he says, can, can, you, can, you come, can you come down here? What? <laughs> I've got to be honest, can you? <laughs> can, can, can you? Yeah, give me that dress. I got the dress. I just went down. And I was just going to go. I thought it was like a regular deal. I'm going to go down to his work. I'm going to wait in the parking lot. He's going to come out at break. We're going to have coffee and smoke cigarettes. He's going to go back in. Everybody's going to think we're gay. And it's okay. <laughs> and, and it wasn't. I walked onto the movie set of a movie called Runaway Train. And it was amazing. I walked up. Whoa, it's the cutest thing I've ever seen in my life. All these kids from Brentwood and Bel Air, they're all dressed like convicts. <laughs> and they all got on like fake tattoos. And they're all coming up to me going, hey, hey, hey. Does this look hard? <laughs> well, yeah, you'd be somebody's wife in prison. Oh, that'd be <laughs> And they all had fake tattoos. I'm going, oh, I'm sorry, that's smeared. I'm sorry. Wow, that's what it is. And so this guy comes up and says, hey, do you, you want to be in a movie? And I said, what do I got to do? He said, do you want to be an extra? I said, extra what? <laughs> he says, can you act like a convict? Give it a shot. <laughs> I've been in every prison in the state of California. I'll give it a shot. <laughs> so they give me a pair of them blue pants. I wear them well. <laughs> them states, I just wear them. I put them on. You know, he's been here. See? They just fit. And then he gives me that blue shirt. And, and I took off my shirt. So immediately see, he sees this tattoo. Now, when he saw that tattoo, this tattoo, you could tell I wasn't in the Marines. <laughs> and it doesn't say nothing about my mother, see? The tattoo says, oh, he was in the pen. And the guy goes like this. <laughs> I'm wondering, now, what damn neighborhood is that? <laughs> guy comes over and says, hey, you're Danny Trejo. I go, yeah, you're Eddie Bunker. What's up? This guy I was in the pen with. He says, Danny, what are you doing here? I said, I'm hanging out with this kid. Now they're going to give me 50 bucks for acting like a convict. <laughs> he says, hey, you know what? I, I, wrote, I wrote the screen. Do you, want a, do you want a real job? And I says, well, what do I got to do? And he says, uh, well, we need somebody to train one of the actors how to box. And this guy knew I was lightweight and welterweight champion of every penitentiary I was in. And he says, he said, we got to train this actor how to box. And I said, well, will they, will they give me 50 bucks? <laughs> and he says, I'll give you 320 a day. How bad do you want this guy beat up? <laughs> I figured they wanted me to sock somebody and, you know, I'll write about it and, 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 and make amends. <laughs> but I'll have $320. And he goes, no, 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 you got to be real careful because this kid might sock you. 
for $320, give him a bat. <laughs> Shoot. I've been beat up for free, huh? <laughs> and I started training Eric Roberts how to box in a movie called Runaway Train. And Eric, me and Eric got along, and the director liked me, and the rest is history. I've, I've done over, over 70 movies since then. You know? <laughs> Every once in a while, I just see that guy, and uh, and I'm still here. And God, it's amazing. Man. It's like you know the way He sets stuff up in His time. You know, I, today I'm in a relationship that is unbelievable. I don't know. I don't. I don't know how. But I've learned some things about relationships, and it's like. You have to do stuff. <laughs> like, like come home. <laughs> and you gotta like, like let your spouse know where you're at. <laughs> I never, I used to disappear for weeks. And then when somebody would track me, what do you do? What do you, what do you care? Oh, yeah, oh no. Oh, I live there. Oh, okay. So today I'm honest. I'm I'm, uh, I'm completely monogamous, and I never knew what that meant. Honest to God, honest to God, I will tell you that God's honest truth. One of the sayings that was in my family was "uno en la calle, uno en la casa," one on the streets and one in the house. That's that's what I grew up with, and it took me a long time to realize. Life isn't very happy like that, you know. And I'm sorry, I'm telling you, I'm sorry for all you guys that are playing. It's okay. I, will, I don't want to get into your business. But I'm talking about for me. For me. It's like all I want to do is to be clean and sober, honest with my mate, and, and try to work this program to the best of my ability. My life has gotten better. My life has gotten better and better and better. Today, my life is a dream. Do you understand? If you're new, I suggest you go to a lot of meetings. If you're new, I suggest you go to a lot of meetings. If you're new, I suggest you go to a lot of meetings. And the reason I say that is because when you're new, what you hear is, so let's allow to live. So if you're new, go to a lot of meetings. God bless you. Thank you. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Sobercast is ad-free, and we'd like your help in order to keep it that way. So if you'd like to help us be self-supporting by pledging a dollar to a month, visit Sobercast.com and look for the donate links. Thank you very much.